let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and in remembrance of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now the Lord's Prayer as he taught it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Even though I owe him a lot, he still extends me so much. Amen. It's almost like he doesn't even keep track of what, what he's already given me. What a blessing. What a blessing. So we're talking about revival. We're talking about revival. But it, revival's not an, 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 it's not an event. It's not an event. It's a process. And why do, we, why do we want revival? Why do we need revival? Um, why do we even have them? Well, if you, you look into the Old Testament, you'll find that, um, that we need it because we forget. We forget the blessings and we incrementally move away from a position of thanks and a position of praise and worship and we, we just become methodical in our, of what we do and uh, coming to church. Church is not something where you worship and it's not where you go to meet God. It's, uh, it becomes something you just do. And uh, you and I are guilty of that. The church as an institution is guilty of that. We run programs and we forget what we are originally here for. And so we have to have revivals. I looked up this little, little story about, um, about the Israelites. And it comes from Numbers 11th chapter. There's always a little malcontent in the group as they go through uh, the, the wilderness on their way to the promised land. There's always that element uh, it just, it just ain't good enough for me. Right? No matter how many blessings they have and, and are sustained, it's just not enough. And I don't know why, I'm not, I'm not going to preach on this, but the Lord has laid it on my heart all week as I was reading these scriptures that maybe part of our problem in this culture and in this land that we have, we have experienced so much prosperity we don't have anything else to do but bicker and fight. I can remember my brother and I could get along and my cousins in the woods building something with nothing, damming up creeks, catching crawfish, salamanders for fish bait, and not one fight would break out. But you let Christmas morning come around. <laughs> and all hell would break loose. I think one of the most discouraging words for any parent should be when the first time that your child goes, Mine! 
And you go, where did that come from? That's the beginning of the end right there. And I just want to, maybe we need to think about that. that. We live in such prosperity that instead of spending our time thanking and worshiping the one that gave it to us, we bicker about small details. The rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. Something was free. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks and onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. This manna. It comes like clockwork every day. It gives them all the nourishment they need. They don't have to plant a field. They don't have to speculate and pray for rain. It just shows up day in and day out. And yet it's not enough. And so God hears their, their whining, because that's what it is in the one translation. It says there's just a bunch of whiners in this group. Not y'all, this group. And so he hears it. And so God just does. God says, all right, I'll, I hear you. I hear you. You want some meat. And say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. And that means consecrate yourselves, pull yourself out, set yourself aside, set time aside. Give me some time because something else is going to happen tomorrow. And you shall eat meat. I don't think those are words of encouragement from God. For you have wailed in the hearing of the Lord saying, if only we had meat to eat, surely it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not only one day or two days or five days or ten days or twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you. Because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? I'll bless you until you can't stand it. We want revival. I hear stories. Every church I've ever been in, I hear stories about the days. I remember when. And when I go into a church, can I go into a church, we don't, we don't know the history. We don't know. We've never experienced it. But it's there. And it's always there. And it's always a talk about what it used to be like. The good old days. And they're speak, always spoken in past terms. Those days are gone. We don't know if they're ever coming back. And you know, it's true. It is true. It is true. You're, you're, what the people say is true. But it's not just the community church in this community or another community. It is the church in general. It is the prominence that at one time was placed on the church, the, the building. You know, we don't want to really worship buildings and put too much value on buildings. But in a community, the church building was, was the hub. You know, you still see it. You can drive into small towns. There's the steeple. That's where the center of this town is. That's where the heart of this town is, right there. I can identify it. But the church has lost that in culture and society. And it needs to be reclaimed. We are in so desperate need of a revival, but what we, want, we don't want a, 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 an event. We want a transformation. We do want to, to be revived, to live once again, to be in the community what we once were and what God intended us to be. 
I'm going to read something from Exodus about the tabernacle. God said, I want you to build me a house to stay in. And that's where I'm going to reside. And we read in um, Exodus 40, 34 verse. And this is at the end of it. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. Listen, listen, this is prophetic. This is prophetic. I'm going to make a prophetic claim right here, right now. You, You write this down, mark this time. The Lord's coming in and He's going to sit here. Amen? He's going to hover. He's going to brood over this place. And things are not going to be the same as they ever were. They're going to be much better than they ever have been. Because we're not trying to get back to where we were. God never wants us to go backwards. He's always saying, live into something new. You can build on what happened at one point, but live tomorrow and into tomorrow with expectations of the grandeur of what I'm going to do. The newness and the freshness of what I'm going to do. Many of you have sat through many revivals through your lives. You have sat through many church services. And it has become stale and it's just more of the same. I want to tell you now, reassure you now, there is more that God has in store for you in worship, in your lives, in your community, in your families. Amen? Give me an amen. Amen. Do you want it? Do you crave it? Not a revival, an event, but do you want God to habitate here? To take this place over and say, this is my place. And you will work for me. And you will host my presence. Our daughter is coming into town this week. And they're going to do um, at the Appalachian Trail. And I love to see her, but I know it's a lot of work for Kay because Kay gets everything just right for when she comes into town. Right? Kay has a a beautiful, clean house all the time, but takes it up a notch when Sarah comes. Drives me crazy. It's not that I don't want Sarah to come, I just don't want to go through that. Amen? But if God shows up, you better treat Him like she treats the daughter. Right? Clean the place up. Clean up the heart. Clean up. Let God habitate your heart. God does not go to dirty vessels. A heart with... with vengeance and no forgiveness there's no room for God when you're empty God pours in when you have a craving heart that's where God will be the bad news is that sometimes we really have to get to a bad place before we allow that to happen I look at people sometimes and I go you know what it's not going to be pretty when God breaks that person Amen. Amen. Not looking forward to it. But that's when God poured into me the most. Amen. Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, he's, the tabernacle's the church, right? And I'll tell you where the proximity is, and, and I'll tell you how, how important a, a church body is to the community if we just model what, what God did for the Israelites as they go through, the, through the, the, the desert. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. It's the center of, of their communal life. Everything revolves around the tabernacle where God dwells. The same should be overlaid on churches today. They need to be the focus, the energy point. Not this gonna, it's gonna hurt some of y'all. And if somebody hearing this on Facebook or whatever, the focus of your life is and your kids' life is not the soccer field. It's not the baseball diamond. It's not the football field. 
It's not gymnastics. It's not karate. It is the church. And the body of Christ that dwells in the church. Until we reclaim that, revival is just an event. But it has to be made. We, we didn't lose the church like that. It was a gradual decline. I'm going to read you something. I got it somewhere around here. It's in the bulletin. How many of you, how many of you uh, read um, C.S. Lewis? Yeah. Good, get him. He, he's well published. The Nardia Chronicles was C.S. Lewis wrote him, and he wrote a, a, a book. It's called The Screw Tape Letters. It's a dialogue between uh, the devil uh, or a devil's advocate, a, a angel of the devil, and his nephew uh, Wormwood. And Screw Tape is the uncle, and uh, it's a dialogue on how to corrupt Christian people. And his, this is a great, this is a, a great quote. Indeed, the steadfast road to hell is the gradual one. The gentle, soft slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. Your affectionate uncle, screw tape. It's probably the best advice he ever gave, old Wormwood, right? Let you think you're comfortable right where you're at. It's okay. Kay and I talk about this all the time. The people who are most host destruction are, are susceptible to the workings of the evil spirits or the devil are the people who think they're comfortable in their relationship with Christ. Amen? So as we read in Exodus, now listen, whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on each stage of their journey. Always led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Always led. Didn't move. They moved until God moved. Then they pack all that stuff up. Pack up the tabernacle and move with Him. Tabernacle put back in, all the tribes would, would circle and encamp it, encamp it right around it. They were always, they were never going to be out there. Ark of the Covenant. Drift off a little bit. Ark of the Covenant. Never went into battle with an Ark of, without the Ark of the Covenant. When they did, they lost. God went before them, success. Always. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day. Amen? And fire was in the cloud by night. Therefore, the eyes of all the house of Israel at each stage of their journey focused on what was happening at the tabernacle. Waiting on God to move. If we want revival, and I believe you do, I don't think we have a choice. Amen? I think things have gotten so dire, we don't have a choice. We either got to light it up or lose it. Claim it or lose it. Because they're coming for it. It is their full intention for evangelical Christians to be a thing of the past. Some churches they don't worry about. They've already got them. Let's not be one of them. Let's be a threat. Right? In our boldness, in our Christian witness, let us be a threat. Let, you know what? Let churches around us say, Ooh, I don't know if I'd go there. That, uh, something's going on there. You know, people, Because people get offended when things... Pastors, believe me, pastors get offended when something's happening at somebody's church and that happened in your church. And they'll throw, they'll cast doubt on what's happening in the movement of the Lord. They'll do it every time. They will. It's happening in Dawsonville right now. It's been happening for three years. We want revival. We've got to prepare. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You can, you, you're going to figure out the details, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm calling on a fast and a prayer session and a, a, a time of prayer for discernment and fasting to prepare yourself and this church to host the presence of God. Now, that seems kind of abstract, and, and I'm sure many of you are going, well, I don't know what you want me to do. I want you to pray, and I want you to fast. 
Well, I don't know how to fast. Fast something. Fast that morning cup of coffee. Fast something. Let something go. Dedicate something to God. God, if you'll show up in my church, I'll give this up. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It's just something that you habitually do. Just say, you know what, God, I'm going to give this up uh, for you in preparation for your presence. And Lord, I'm just not going to pray for 30 seconds. I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here because uh, it happens to me. I'm going to just go out on a limb. You probably don't pray for more than 30 seconds. Throw up a quick one. You know. Hey, I'm guilty. I made a commitment one time during Lent. I was going to get on the side of the bed, kneel down, bow my head. Lasted about a week. And I'm a pastor. I'm just telling you. Your prayers are short. Stay down there. Push through. Give God some time. He'll reward you. He will reward you if you push through. My, my prayer, what my time is now, I think the reason I was a little felt mixed up up here last week is because I was in, I'm, I asked the Lord, usually sometimes I'm like, Lord, in, in my prayer time I want to hear from you, you know, I'm going to be quiet, I want to hear from you. But my prayers this month or my desires this month are, Lord, let me just feel you. Let me just feel you. Just let me and just sit here until I know you're here with me. And apparently I wasn't waiting long enough. Amen. But I'm going to still do it. Because I still want to, I want to, still want to see the Lord. So I want to feel the Lord. So I'm asking you. We've got about a month. A little over a month. We have a little bit over a month to prepare ourselves for a revival when the process begins. And pray that the revival doesn't last just three days. That it's carried on and on and on. And that God reclaims the position in this community that He rightly deserves. Amen? Everybody hear me? We say amen in agreement. Amen. All right. You know what's before you. Buckle up, baby. Amen? When God comes in, He's going to rattle it, he's going to rattle it up. He's probably going to say, some of the things you've been doing, I'm not really down with. You need to change it. They don't laugh. Don't laugh. When you ask God to come on the scene, He's not always happy. You know what you're doing. He's, uh, he's asked me to purge a few things out of my life a time or two. And I'm sure He's got some more things that I'm doing He's not too happy with.